Hi guys and welcome back to our ICU series. If you're new here, my name is Fatai and on this channel I teach medicine and also discuss topics around medical education. So please consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button below and the notification button as well so you can get the videos as I upload them. Today I'll be going over hyponatremia. It's one of those very confusing topics, but I've done my best to try to make it as simple as possible. We're also using the screen today, you know, just trying to find the best ways to deliver these contents. Um, but anyways, uh, let's get right to it. So hyponatremia basically is decreased sodium in the blood. Some people may want to look at it as, you know, decrease uh, 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 too much water in the blood, you know, in comparison to sodium. But however you see it on the lab, it says, low sodium. So what do you do when you see low sodium in the blood? Next thing would be to get your serum osmolality. Um, serum osmolality basically helps you differentiate what type of hyponatremia it is. In fact, the one that we're trying to focus mostly on is true hyponatremia. So when you have your serum osmolality high, because sodium contributes to the majority of the, the, the uh, uh, osmolality in the blood, if you have hyponatremia, by default, you should have hypotonic serum. But if you have hypertonic serum, something else is causing that hyponatremia. For example, hyperglycemia, where it pulls a lot of water into the blood and by default dilutes the sodium. So it is hyponatremia, but we don't really consider it as really true hyponatremia. We try to treat the hyperglycemia, we correct the sodium for the hyperglycemia, and usually we're done with that. Um, the next example is isoto isotonic hyponatremia. You have, again, in hyponatremia, you should expect the sodium, uh, the, 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 hype, the tonicity to be low, but if you have a normal tonicity, normal osmolality, it means something else is going on. So, for example, here, um, you have too much lipids in the blood, for example, or you have too much protein in the blood, and that kind of messes with the proportion of, you know, the way that the machine measures uh, sodium and it gives you hyponatremia. And really that is pseudo-hyponatremia. If it is isotonic, it's usually pseudo-hyponatremia. Again, in hyperlipidemia, marked hyperlipidemia, super, super high lipids and very, very high protein. Um, the one that we're most concerned about is the hypotonic hyponatremia because we consider that really true hyponatremia. There is hypotonicity, there's decreased osmolality, serum osmolality, and there is hyponatremia. They go hand in hand, and that's what we consider true hyponatremia. So when we get that, when we get a serum osmolality, now we need to you know, say where the hyponatremia is coming from. There's two things that can happen that usually leads to hyponatremia. One is when you have too much water in the, in the, in the, in the, in the serum, uh, in, in the blood, for example, patient not able to you know, take out water effectively, or patient eating or drinking something that is going to create too much water in the body. So for example, psychogenic polydipsia, they're drinking too much water, and because of that, they're diluting the uh, a serum and that's causing a hyponatremia. Patient with beer potomania, they're drinking too much beer. When you break that down, basically gives you carbs and carbs, when you break that down further, you get a lot of water. Sec third thing is T and toe syndrome. So for example, somebody who's surviving on purely carbs, when you break down the carbs, they, you, you get mostly water and really that's what's gonna dilute the, the serum and cause a hyponatremia. Uh, last example, for example, in, in patient with ASRD, um, you know, they, they're not able to pee and they, all of the water is being retained in the, in, the, in the serum, in the blood, and it's diluting the serum. So all, all of these things cause hyponatremia because there's too much water in the body. Um, directly and it has nothing to do with ADH and that's why in this uh, on this slide I've div divided it into ADH independent like the ones that I've mentioned psychogenic polydipsia, T and toast, beer potomania, immunophilia. Then there is ADH dependent meaning all of the hyponatremia is because of ADH and what does ADH do? ADH causes reabsorption of water and by that it reduces or dilutes the sodium in the body, and that's what causes hyponatremia. Um, how do we know whether it's ADH dependent or ADH independent? We use the urine osmolality. Urine osmolality, because again, when ADH is present, it goes into the uh, kidneys and reabsorbs all of the water. What happens to urine osmolality becomes high. That tells us there is, you know, when we have increased urine osmolality, that's ADH dependent. When you have when you don't have ADH, nothing is there to do that. Whatever water is in the serum eventually ends up in the urine, and because of that, you'll have dilute urine, and that's decreased urine osmolality. So 
We get serum osmolalysis at first to tell us it is true hyponatremia. When we get a hypotonic hyponatremia, then we get urine osmolality to tell us whether it's ADH dependence or ADH independence. ADH independent, we already gave you the examples, um, the, these things that I mentioned here. And ADH dependent are the ones that we tend to really focus on, you know, figuring out exactly what's going on so we can treat appropriately. And the examples of that is based on uh, the amount of the, the fluid status. If it is hypovolemic, euvolemic, or hypervolemic. So let's quickly look at the examples of that. Um, with hypervolemic hyponatremia and hypervolemic hyponatremia, two things is happening here. Or one thing is happening, right, caused by two different things. The main thing happening with either of these two situations is that you have activation of the renin angiotensin system. When you have the activation of renin angiotensin system from hypovolemia because there's renal hyperperfusion, right, that causes increased ADH through all of the cascade and that's what causes the hyponatremia. With hypervolemic hyponatremia, you have volume, yes, but they're not effective. It's going to third spaces, it's not reaching the kidneys, and that's also causing renal hyperperfusion. Example, you know, CHF, nephrotic syndrome, liver cirrhosis. So all of these things, hypervolemic, yes, but the volume is not reaching the kidneys. You have activation of renal angiotensin system. You have ADH, you have the reabsorption of water, you have the dilution. And uh, basically, how do you know that these two things, apart from euvolemic, where you have, you know, ADH primarily from a disease like pulmonary pathology or CNS pathology, you know, or drugs or critically ill patients with transient SIDH, you have ADH being produced abnormally and that's causing the hyponatremia. You use your urine sodium because the renin angiotensin system like we have in hypervolemic or hypervolemia will have the sodium from the urine reabsorbed. With SIDH, the sodium in the urine is not effectively reabsorbed, so you have increased urine sodium in SIDH in hypervolemic hyponatremia and hypervolemic hyponatremia, you have decreased urine sodium. And really, that's the way that I've been able to make sense of hyponatremia. It's not always straightforward. You can watch this video several times or DM me, ask me questions, and I'll try to do my best to be able to respond. Um, thank you again for hanging around. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.